There's an air of nervousness around uh, the old Travid section here in Moscow tonight. As uh, if the uh, kind of media and journalists are correct, this could be Group Harvard's toughest competition to negotiate. The group isn't that hard, Manchester United's group, as they return to the Champions League tonight. After being the Europa League winners, obviously, last time out, it was the backdoor entrance, but it was absolutely vital one way or the other that Manchester United made it. But at the time, Jose Reno was manager and Manchester United had no real changes to think about and then everything changed. Benfica, Basel and Moscow, all previous opponents of Manchester United, it's not the hardest group in Group A. It should be very simple to negotiate, but for someone new like Greg Pavlovich, it might be a different story. Plenty of uh, no names in the Moscow uh, team tonight, not for me unfortunately. Uh, I don't think there's anyone. Witzel might be a familiar name for me, but uh, it's a uh, it's rarely, it's really unknown for anyone outside of the team. Although the Gonzalez actually sounds familiar as well. Well, Manchester United going with a full strength dog with David De Gea in goal. It's the same defensive three once again. Lindelof, Jones, and Eric Bailly. Zaha is with Herrera and Mata. With Mkhitaryan and Pogba, Martial and Rashford, of course, up front with the injury still to Romelu Lukaku and Zlatan Ibrahimovic. So what everyone seems to be calling Greg Pavlovich's toughest task of the season to negotiate through the Champions League. And it's wet tonight. So that just adds an added element to the, uh, to the task that Greg Pavlovich faces. I think... Negotiating this group would be the minimum expectations for this team. Manchester United have won three out of their previous four meetings so far in the entire season. Obviously with the 0-0 draw against Leicester being the only dropped points. Rashford is immediately off the kickoff, And Mkhitaryan has put that in. 1-0 immediately to Manchester United. A quick fire start. From Greg Pavlovich's team, he wants to put this to bed early. Henry Mkhitaryan, within the first few seconds, has given Manchester United the lead. Marcus Rashford, immediate hold-up play here. The shot off the keeper into the path of a very open Mkhitaryan, and he makes it look easy. And Manchester United, well, we have a surprise lead. We've barely arrived, and Greg Pavlovich has barely arrived at the stadium. And he's already celebrating his first ever Champions League goal as a head coach of this team. And Mkhitaryan gets his first Champions League goal of the season. Already a fixture in the Champions League with the likes of Borussia Dortmund. And now he's got a goal for United to celebrate. And I think that's his first goal of the season overall as well. So, wow, what a quick fire start from Greg Parfish's side. Um, and immediately, Moscow are on the back foot. And if it continues like this, we could be in for a long night uh, in terms of their concerns. But, uh, well, <laughs> it's all going well so far for Greg Pavlovich, isn't it? And uh, he came in this week with uh, a lot of people kind of writing him off to a degree. Maybe to navigate the group for the skin of his teeth. Uh, don't forget, everyone does face each other twice in this group stage. So that will obviously help. But, uh, like we said, the group isn't particularly tough even though this is Champions League and realistically there is no difficult game uh, easy game in the Champions League per se but uh, Manchester United have a very early lead here and they look to be adding more to it Zaha, oh that's brilliant and Wilfred Zaha is going to shoot to go probably to that penalty he conceded as Copenhagen have uh, immediately conceded against Atletico Madrid it's an early uh, goal for Godin who I believe is the defender. So, an early goal for Atletico as they take the lead there. So hard to Rashford. Oh, it's fallen to him. Oh, Marcus Rashford, 2-0. A phenomenal start by Manchester United. Two goals in 11 minutes. The pass from Saha bouncing off the back of Rashford's heel. And he comes back up with it and puts it in the goal. A phenomenal goal from another goal for Marcus Rashford. And, uh, well, things are looking incredibly rosy right now. A celebration emphatic from Rashford. <laughs> but, uh, oh my. 
Two goals in 12 minutes for Manchester United. Moscow are in for a long night. And we're probably looking at another cricket score here. Moscow deal. Manchester United 2. And absolutely on a roll. Benfica have taken the lead as well against Basel in the other group uh, game in this group. So Benfica have taken a lead as well. That puts Manchester United level with Benfica on points, but obviously Manchester United have the extra goal. And then we go ahead on goal difference at the end of the night. Martial, looking it across to Rashford. Oh, he's making the chances, isn't he, Rashford? When he's in this sort of mood, you can barely stop him. And again, well, I think that looked better than it actually was, to be fair. Oh, Greg Parfit, she must be wondering, what am I doing that's so right at the moment? Four minutes of added on time, and Manchester United are starting from a couple of scares late in this first half of the Reds have been comfortable all night long. It's on the top, and Aaron's hit the bar. Go gaping, and he's managed to hit the bar. All he had to do was slot it. Oh my, and that is the best chance that uh, Moscow have had so far. And it's been blown. And with the cross, bounces off Lindelof and De Gea picks it up. And he throws it out to Witzel. And all of a sudden, it's looking a little more uncomfortable. David De Gea, he's had rain new shots against him. He's kicked it out in hopes of trying to end the first half quickly. That's the end of the first half then. Well, Manchester United's first 15 minutes was sublime. Two goals and Greg Barbage looked to have his team going for a cricket score tonight with uh, goals from Mkhitaryan and Rashford but all of a sudden Moscow seemed to come back into it late at the end of the first half and with the best chance falling to uh, I believe it was Aaron who hit the post or you know, hit the bar the goal gaping in David De Gea in no man's land and he blew that one and how much will uh, Moscow rue that chance it was a chance to get back into the game in which Manchester United in the first half were almost unstoppable and it's uh it's a chance they made root. Moscow deal, United 2 and more or less cruising. And one can only wonder what Craig's reaction to that was. Probably not that much. Manchester United were kind of home and dry at that point. David Hayes come out, the goal is gaping and they've missed again. Moscow, they're missing these open chances. David De Gea absolutely nowhere again. He's having a bit of a, a torrid time at the moment. He's saving the shots but uh, Oh, it's poor from David De Gea. He's kept that one out anyway. And Moscow just don't make it any easier for themselves, do they? It's another looping ball. That could end up anywhere. And it's ended up with Phil Jones. Phenomenal defending. And Phil Jones is now running with the ball. And he's found Rashford. Phenomenal stuff from Phil Jones. Rashford into Hogba 3-0. Phenomenal job by Phil Jones in the first place with great defending finding Rashford with this ball and then Rashford finding Pogba 3-0 game over for CSK Moscow Manchester United and Greg Parfitch are in an absolute dream world at the moment what a phenomenal piece of play by Phil Jones in the build up he found Rashford Rashford found Pogba and he did the rest. 3 0 to United. But Phil Jones, absolutely sensational piece of defending, found Rashford with the ball and they did the rest. And it has been a star studded night for Manchester United. Yes, Moscow have probably had the better second half to a degree, but uh, uh, the game has been killed off now. And uh, rude chances from Moscow's perspective tonight. But Manchester United take nothing away. They've had less of the ball in the second half than the first. Oh, here's Martial. And it could be more goals for United. Marcus Rashford and the goalkeeper's on the deck. And Martial could not take the finishing touch there. And uh, I think it went out for a corner, possibly. Yes, it did. And Pulp has gone up to take it. Three minutes rather than time. But Moscow, you have to think with the chances they created and the way they've missed them. Uh, you could add 10, and I think United will probably still win tonight. Break by of all people has gone down, and that is the end of the game. Well, Manchester United 
Not to go with you, but the skin of their team in any means, even though it probably looked like it to a degree. But uh, just phenomenal first half of United, where they went for the kill early and they succeeded. 3 0 victory for United, with Moscow having much more of the ball in the second half. But rude missed chances everywhere from Moscow. They were poor with the finishing tonight. Maybe the conditions had something to do with it. But uh, Manchester were absolutely clinical with theirs, even with having less of the ball. Mkhitaryan in the first few seconds, followed by Rashford 10 minutes later, and then Pogba with a killing goal sent Manchester United through, well not through really, but uh, through to a very comfortable looking 3-0 victory and the first three points on the board in the Champions League for Greg Pavlovich. Well, it's been fair to say tonight there have been a few surprises. Uh, Bayern Munich has been reported in the first half of 1-0 down at Anderlecht, but they've turned it completely around with a convincing 3-1 victory for them in the end. But a very surprising result at Celtic Park as Celtic drew 2-0 two, two with Paris Saint-Germain, undoubtedly the powerhouse in the uh, in the world at the moment, and Celtic have held them to a 2 all draw. And uh, the same could be said for uh, Roma, who have held the champions to a one all draw with Chelsea and their game tonight. Moscow convincingly beaten by Manchester United, Copenhagen uh, conceding twice against Atletico Madrid in the end, and they won by two goals to nil. Juventus beating Olympiagos by two goals to one, the same score line against Benfica and Basel, meaning that uh, Manchester United uh, lead on goal difference, of course, in their group. Supporting Lisbon, holding Barcelona to a draw, or draw there as well. So Barcelona able to get a late equaliser. So many of the groups as they stand right now, Manchester United and Benfica leading the way in Group A. Manchester United ahead by two better goal difference. Green Group B, it's uh, the usual suspects, but not entirely by Munich having to come from 1-0 down against Antelope, of course, with Paris Saint-Germain and Celtic both earning a point. Atletico Madrid and Chelsea, the point scores in Group C, of course. Group D is Juventus and Barcelona, and Sporting getting a point as well. In Group E, Sevilla have uh, taken their kind of win as well, and they actually beat their team, but Spartak Moscow actually held Liverpool to a draw and that means they're on a point each. Napoli in Group F with final taking all three points with Manchester City losing their game in that kind of matchup. AS Monaco having the lead in Group G with Porto and Leipzig on a point. And in Group H, Real Madrid obviously leading the way. But FC Natez has uh, beaten their opponents and they're a surprising level and second in Group H at the moment. Greg Parfridge's Manchester United team fresh from their Champions League domination really of CSK and Moscow now have Everton to entertain here at Old Trafford and a few old friends coming with them most notably the man who left them in the summer Wayne Rooney their former captain who turned into their all-time top scorer beating Bobby Charlton last season. Sam Adice has had his first season in charge of Everton and he's doing well he's actually got them up to sixth at the moment but at the top Manchester United in utter domination mode and they have become the best defensive team in the league only conceding one goal all season long and that's including the Carabao Cup and Champions League competitions as well and that one goal was against Stoke and a late penalty given away by former Everton man Marilyn Fellaini. Starting for Go Palmas this afternoon only two men retain their spots for the Champions League place as uh, it's David De Gea and Phil Jones. Jones is with Valencia Smalling and Ryan Bertrand. It's Carrick with Mata and Matic in the midfield. Lingard is with Solby and up top it's Gizzi Zardes as Martial and Rashford rested but Rashford makes the bench. Sam Adoise's team looks like this. Jordan Pickford will start in goal. And the defence will be Marcelo Williams, Michael Keane and Gilbert in there. Goye is with another man in Morgan Schneider, the former United man. Salvo is with Johnson and Sigerson in the midfield. Up top is the former Manchester United captain and now acclaimed legend, Wayne Rooney. Lingard is pushed to the floor and Lingard is down on the sideline. Everton play on. The referee is playing on here. Manchester United still trying to call for the foul against Lingard. Ertra clears it. That's going to be a worrying sign for Greg Parvich. He's already lost Romelu Lukaku to injury. 
And he's also got uh, Aaron Henwood, Slatan Ivanovic, and Rojo still recovering from theirs. Rojo and Ibrahimovic ligament damage. Aaron Henwood with a toe injury. She suffered a rather strange toe injury from uh, whacking it at some point during the day. And uh, it's uh, been a very strange injury in the way of the way it still it only bleeds at certain points. Aaron Henwood is one of the, one of the weirdest injuries he's ever had. And it's keeping him out. And he hasn't had a play game under Greg Pavlovich yet, but he was one of the most supportive of the appointment. He certainly knew who Greg Pavlovich was, even if nobody else really did. And that's a bit of an unfair statement. Everyone knows who Greg Pavlovich is. And my question is, would he be able to play in a totally different culture of sport? And right now, the answer is an emphatic yes, because he's only conceded one goal and won all but one game. And that game he drew against Leicester, which was a 0-0 draw. In which Manchester United and uh, Leicester had phenomenal defensive performances, if nothing else. Sigurdsson. Rooney. Sigurdsson and Rooney linking up well. That's a good ball. And now Johnson into Sigurdsson, saved by De Gea. I think Sigurdsson is looking good at the moment. David De Gea, another phenomenal save. Straight at him. He still has to make it, and David De Gea more than capable of doing that, of course. Schneider. And obviously the likes of Angel Gomez and Timothy Fuzi Men's are young up-and-comers that Greg Parkwich will probably totally believe in with his young player culture already taking this Manchester United side to places where it wouldn't have expected. There is the half-time whistle. David De Gea has had it all to do, but he's done it all as he often does. And it's 0-0 at the break with no goals and no real clear-cut chances. Everton probably have had a couple, but Manchester United have been decidedly silent up front so far as compared to Moscow, but they're still unbeaten. And uh, that is the most important stat for them as their role under Greg Pavlovich continues. It's uh, United nil, Everton nil at the break. Michael Carrick, ever calm and cool and collected in the midfield. A valuable servant to Manchester United and the oldest player in the team now. But uh, the current longest serving player still goes to Aaron Henwood, still going. But uh, as of yet, ineffective and unavailable to be effective on the sidelines. Literally on the sidelines, by the way, Greg Povich is. On a bit, a bit of a consulting role at the moment. Obviously, he knows everything about the club inside and out. Aaron Henwood has been one of their most loyal servants, really. And no doubt, he will get uh, every kind of possible loyalty accolade you can get. Because even though Aaron Henwood has never had the most prolific of scoring seasons or anything in terms of goals and accolades, his will to win and just his story has just been one of the great stories in football. A kid with a handicap playing for Manchester United because a manager like Sir Alex Ferguson believed in him and believed in his work rate and uh, he's come through for them in so many ways just by working hard and uh, I think that's a fact lost on so many players these days. You can argue that the culture of football it's more about the money now and the and the wage packets, but Aaron Henwood is none of that. It's Izardes. I think that's why Greg Parvich is believing in his young core so much that he's got under his disposal at United. Because they're playing for places. And uh and they're playing for future spots in this Manchester United side, but is it in the spots in the Manchester United side or the spots of the future? That's the only question that can never really be answered fully until it actually happens. Johnson, next for Manchester United, it will be a game at Newcastle against Rafa Benitez, a bit of an old rival from their, his Liverpool days, of course. And we all know the uh, facts 
that uh, Rafa Benitez pointed out in that grant in the press conference and then he ended up really falling a bit flat on his face in a degree um, when Manchester United went on to win the title that year it was, uh, I think Manchester United fans as a whole found that rather hubris Aaron Hill was absolutely ecstatic putting Rafa Benitez in his place he said and he's not really outspoken like that Aaron Hamwood, but that year he was particularly mad at comments that were in his words pathetic uh, about his manager and Hamwood stood up and uh, was counted really Paul Jones did a, a defensive work and uh, cleared away I think it was Valencia Rooney Rooney with the ball in and Johnson has got there ahead of De Gea and goal for Everton the second Manchester United conceded this season Wade Rooney delightful assist and finally it could be the first loss of the season for Greg Pavlovich well Wade Rooney looked up saw that Sabo was running and trusted him to get the head of De Gea and he did to be fair to him it's a great work to goal from Everton. It's just one of those things that happens. And Greg Pavlovich could be staring down at his first loss of the season. But I think to be fair to him, his team have done rather well. But they've been rather quiet up top today. But another defensive good performance for the first time this season. Doesn't look to be working. Mata, um, Everton, to be fair to them, have done well to keep the scoring machine that is Manchester United quiet today. And it looks like they could be rewarded with three points rather than one. And Sam Adice will be the first man to beat Greg Parvich this season. And uh, two goals and four appearances for Rooney certainly isn't a bad overhaul, to be honest. Johnson with the corner. And penalty given against Mata. The referee is pointing to the spot, and I'm assuming it's a handball. Marta is bewildered. Let's have a look at the replay. I think a handball is the call, apparently, from the referee. Let's have a look. So let's see this penalty incident. Handball given against Marta. It looks pretty clear from here. Well, it's hit his arm, and he's had his arm towards the ball. So I think for me, that's a clear decision. Rooney's there with him. Does it really does it really hit him on the arm though? Does it really strike him? From that angle, it didn't look like it. Let's see if we can slow this down. I I think Matt is probably harsh to give in there. Let's have a look. I mean his arm does his arm does touch the ball, and I guess his arm is moving towards it. And he's kind of blocking Rooney out there, so I think looking at it there, I think that is the right decision. Rooney's not getting to the ball. Rooney's showing as much higher than Mata for some reason. I guess it's the jump. I don't... Yeah, I don't think Mata should have even gone for that ball. And I think that's why the referee is giving it. It's... It's come of his arm. It's... It's rather a little unfortunate. But I think at the same time, it is the correct decision. It stopped Rooney from getting it. So, correct decision, I think, for the penalty. Well, it's a strange one. The ball has rather hit the outside of Mata's arm, meaning it could be a bit harsh, but at the end of the day, I think it's the right decision. I think uh, Wade Rooney is stepping up, which he is. So, a chance to score against his former club. The run-up is all over the place, and it's been wounded to Gea, and Rooney has put it in. Wow, the run-up was all stuttery and everything for Rooney. It does count. The referee is not ordering a retake, but... I think David De Gea probably expected something else. And uh, the first loss of the season then. And the first time Greg Povich conceded two goals all season. But this run up from Rooney is just... I'm not sure about that. And I think that's what the fans are upset about. It's a bit of a Ronaldo stutter if you remember when Cristiano Ronaldo used to do that. I think that's what the fans are very unhappy about. The fact that not Rooney has scored. But the way he did it. Uh, which can be considered... 
really a stop and go sort of thing. And that's uh, really his third goal in the season. And uh, the Manchester United fans were not really happy with that. And uh, I don't think they were booing him, they were booing the way it was taken. Greg Parvich loses for the first time this season. And uh, Old Trafford is stunned, really, because Manchester United have played ever so well in the last few games. But today, they just looked really quiet up front, didn't they? Zardes really ineffective today, uh, as opposed to Martial and Rashford. So I think we're starting to find out that maybe a 3-5-2 is more Greg's formation, because as he's used that, Manchester United have won all the games he's used it in. Except today. So, does that mean that Manchester United can't really work with one striker? And was the wingers maybe not the correct decision? I guess time will tell, but uh, obviously they missed Phil Jones and Bailly and Lindelof today due to resting from the Champions League game, but it's probably come at the worst time, really, as it has resulted in Greg Parfitch's first loss of the season. Everton comfortable winners. Uh, in the end, to, to a degree, even though Manchester United didn't play poorly today, just Everton played that little bit better and won by two goals to nil. But before then, I think it's still positive signs for Greg Parvich today. Maybe we're starting to find out that his play style is more suited to a 3-5-2 formation because, as we've said, every time he's used that, United have won, except for today. Manchester United nil, Everton two. In all the other games today, Arsenal resurgence of form continues as they won at the Champions Chelsea at Stamford Bridge today by two goals to one. Crystal Palace and Southampton ending in a 0-0 draw. Huddersfield's big spending is starting to conjure up results and they won today against former champions Leicester Liverpool beating Burnley by a goal to nil. United obviously losing to Everton today by two goals to nil. Newcastle and Stoke City a one all draw. Spurs winning against Swansea City by two goals to one. Watford holding Manchester City to a draw, which I believe puts Watford at the top of the table as they were equal on points and Manchester United lost today. So I do believe that puts Watford at the top of the table for the first time in a long time, if ever. In the West derby, West Brom lost to West Ham by two goals to one. Well, I do stand corrected in some regard because Spurs have come from nowhere and uh, actually taking the lead of the table once again uh, ahead of Watford. Their superior goal difference of, well, one. <laughs> we keep saying superior goal difference for some reason. But Spurs, in any case, and Watford are the last two unbeaten teams now with Manchester United losing today. Leaves Spurs and Watford the only unbeaten teams in the league. And both London clubs are at the top of the table. Manchester United drop to third. Everton climb to fourth with their win today at Old Trafford. Liverpool up to 6th with Arsenal, 5th rather with Arsenal 6th, Leicester up to 7th despite their uh, draw I think it was, Stoke 8th, Newcastle 9th and Manchester City only 10th so far, Huddersfield up to 11th with Brighton in 12th with the, two of the relegated, uh, promoted clubs rather, Chelsea down to 15th now under Antonio Conte and this is looking familiar. It's looking like the last year of Jose's tenure, second time round. In the relegation zone, Swansea City and West Brom are down there with Bournemouth who, after five, still on zero points, and Eddie Howe is having a bit of a rough time this season. No points out of five so far. And uh, as a side note, the Newcastle United-Manchester United game is actually involved in the Carabao Cup, so we're getting through that rather quickly.